Hey guys, it's Nikki and welcome back to another episode of Stories That Will Make You Scream. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about a case where five different men went missing in a national park. This is one of those true crime stories that really baffled the nation. Five men vanished. In February of 1978, five young men by the names of Gary Mathis, Jack Madruga, Bill Sterling, Ted Weir, and Chuck Schaefer set out on a road trip out of their hometown of Yuba City, California, never to be seen again. They were headed to play a college basketball game that was located in Chico. This group of friends is now known as the Yuba County Five. So while they were on the way to the basketball game that they never made it to, their car broke down and a tow truck driver came and picked them up and took them to a place called the Straw Hat Pizza Parlor where they were last seen. When they didn't make it to the game, search parties were sent out to find them or to find their car. And they did find the abandoned car, but they were nowhere to be found. As days passed, people began to worry, thinking something more sinister might have happened. The families of the missing men waited in agonizing suspense to see what had happened to their dear loved ones. How could five men completely disappear without a trace? And this is where the conspiracy theory started. A lot of people began to speculate that foul play could have happened due to where they were in relation to the country's backwoods. And finally, they found a body, but not five. They only found one body and it was located seven miles from that pizza shop. It was Ted and he was found alone. He was lying face down with his back exposed and his shoes laying neatly next to his body. He was also missing several teeth and on his toxicology report, they found traces of toxic moonshine. However, no internal or external injuries were found that could have been seen as fatal, which is pretty crazy for like a, a dead man found in the woods. Now they didn't find any traces of any of the other men near his body. So that was also very weird because why would you wander out into these woods alone and take off your shoes and lay there and just pass away? You would have to be in some sort of very like confused mental state. He could have been very drunk, but the only thing in the toxicology report again was toxic moonshine. While it was great that they found Ted's body, it didn't really give us any real answers about what happened to him or the other four. Now, almost three months later, in August of 1978, a pair of hunters stumble upon the remains of Jack. Interestingly enough, his remains were eerily similar to what we saw with Ted. Jack was laying on a ridge on the mountainside and he was completely exposed, no outerwear at all, just laying there just laying there dead. No internal or external injuries. What happened to these men? An official cause of death could not even be determined because of the time that had elapsed. But people speculate that it was due to hypothermia because of the weather and him not having any clothes on. Now this has people asking, why are they splitting up? Why are they removing their clothing when it's freezing outside? What would cause someone to do this? What would cause someone to hike miles up a mountain onto a ridge with little to no clothing? Why? Who? Like on your own accord? What? If you thought the conspiracy theories were bad before, they only get worse at this point. We have speculations of alien abductions. There's of course the theory of the backwoods people that are taking them and forcing them to hike up this mountain naked. But for what reason? For why? Who would do this? Some people say maybe they had some sort of hallucinogenic, but wouldn't that show up in their toxicology reports? So Bill, Gary, and Chuck's family still have not heard what happened to their sons. And they're really hoping that they're out there somewhere alive. Fast forward another two months to November, 1978, and we've finally discovered Chuck and Bill. Now they were actually discovered by logging crews and they were at an elevation of 165, indicating that they had climbed this mountain. This was not like a little hike. This was a full on, I climbed a mountain preparing for Mount Everest kind of thing. And they found their bodies laying across from each other. At this point, they are the only two bodies that have been found together 
or even remotely close to each other. Now again, the cause of death was inconclusive because it'd been so long, but people assumed that it was hypothermia. Hope at this point is completely out the window. Nobody thinks that Gary is alive and Gary is the only one that has not been found. In June of 1979, we finally get the answer to what happened to Gary and it comes from a local man named Don. It has been four decades since their death and Gary pretty much leaves us with no answers. Gary is found by Don face down in a creek. People assume he drowned. What could have forced these men to split up in the wilderness, in the cold, removing their clothes, going separate ways, and all falling to a tragic fate. Some people think that when they ate at the pizza parlor, it was bad food and put them into a temporary psychosis, but that seems like a stretch to me. The strangest and most popular theory of what happened is this. Gary had schizophrenia. Gary had a history of psychiatric um, hospitalization. The theory is that he may have had some kind of um, breakdown and he fleed into the woods and maybe the other men tried to follow and find him. In my head, I, I don't really see that theory as being valid because it doesn't explain why the men would take their clothes off in the freezing cold. Now the case remains open to public speculation, but wait, there's more. In 2016, we may have discovered something that explains what happened to the Yuba County Five. This information was withheld from the town for decades. His autopsy showed that he had radiation levels that far, far exceeded the norm, which makes a lot of people believe that this is in fact some sort of paranormal explanation whether it's aliens or cryptids or some kind of entity, the radiation levels are crazy. Now it's 40 years later and people are still wondering what happened to the Yuba County Five. People tend to stay out of these woods, local tribes see there's dark spirits there. Now I think it was government experimentation and the reason I think this is because the radioactivity, the government has been known to do some shady things in national parks. But what do I know? I'm just a girl. Anyways, let me know what you guys think and what story you want me to cover this week. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Say bye, Leo. Bye.